Hey what's happening guys, welcome to your 30 second Vue.js tutorial and in this video we're going to start making HTTP requests. Okay then, so far we have this form right here which allows us to add in a new blog post and so far it's working well. If we add content then it appears down below in this preview section, which is cool right? But eventually we want to take this data and do something with it, like store it in a database or something. Now to do that, we're going to have to start making HTTP requests, get requests, post requests, that kind of thing. So there's a few different ways we can do this in Vue.js. We could use jQuery if you wanted to, or the Fetch API. I'm going to show you a way using this plugin called Vue Resource. Now in the early days of Vue.js, this was kind of like the official way to make and handle these requests. So I'm going to show you how to install this now and how to make and handle these HTTP requests with Vue Resource. So if we scroll down a little bit, we can see to install it, we need to do this thing right here, npm install Vue Resource. So I'm just going to copy this and open up my terminal. Make sure you're in the correct directory. I'm in a Vue.js playlist and then just paste this thing in. And at the end of it, oops, npm install Vue hyphen resource. And at the end, just do double dash save. That's going to save it to our dependencies. Okay, cool. So now that's installed, let's just check our package.json file to make sure it's in our dependencies. And we can see it right there. Cool. Okay, so now how do we use this plugin? Well, first of all, we need to go to our main.js file and import it. This is the file that gets kicked off when we first start our application. So we need to import it here and tell Vue.js we want to use this plugin. So to do that, I'm going to say import and it's view resource from view hyphen resource. OK, mm -hmm. and this is going to be stored in the node module. So Vue.js is going to be clever enough to work out where to get that from. OK, so now we've imported it. Now we need to tell Vue.js we want to use this in our application. And we can do that by saying view dot use and then view resource is this thing right here okay so we're now using this plugin in our application and we can go ahead and start using HTTP requests now how's this gonna work if we take a look at our form we've got all of these different fields right when they filled it in we want some kind of button for them to post it then to a database so let's add that button first so if we go into our add blog component we want to come to the end of the form which is right here and just inside that, we want to add a button. So we'll say button, and we want to attach a click event to this. So to do that, we'll say v hyphen on, and it's going to be click, and it's going to be equal to some kind of function, right? And we'll call this, I don't know, post. So post right there. And the button will say add blog. Now, when we click a button in a form like this, we want to prevent the default behavior, okay? We don't want it to go off the page anywhere. So we're gonna tack on now an event modifier, prevent, and that's gonna prevent that behavior, all right? So now we've created this button, what we need to do is create this method down here, which is actually gonna grab our data, it's gonna take it all and do something with it, post it, right? So let's go down to the object down here and inside our methods, we'll have a post method, which is a function, like so. So this is where we're gonna start using the HTTP capabilities of Vue Resource. So first of all, what we're gonna do is say this, okay, to refer to the component. And then, now we've installed Vue Resource, we can say dollar sign HTTP, right? We can't use that beforehand, but we can now we've installed that plugin. Then we wanna say what type of re uh, request we're making. It's gonna be a post request because what we're doing is grabbing the data that the users input to the fields and we're gonna grab all that and post it to somewhere, right? So parenthesis and in here, we need to say where we're posting to. Now, if we had some kind of database set up, we could post to that database. And we're gonna do that in future tutorials. We're gonna set this up with Firebase and post to our own NoSQL database. But for now, I just want to use a service online called a JSON placeholder. And this basically gives us a very simple REST API to interact with. So we can make post requests or get requests to these different resources right here. And what we're going to do is make a request to the posts, right? So you can see right here, the root is this URL, and then it's just forward slash posts. If we want to make a post request, you see posts. 
So we're going to do that now. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste the URL we need from my GitHub repo. I'll leave the link to that down below. And I'm just going to paste it in here. So we're making a post request to this. And again, this isn't going to do much. We're not going to see where this data goes. We're just kind of getting used to using this HTTP method right here. Okay. So later on, when we do come to use Firebase, we're going to change this URL right here to be the URL of our Firebase. Okay. So the second parameter we need to pass through is an object. And this object is going to be what we want to send. Okay. Now, if we take a look at this REST API kind of thing here, JSON placeholder, you can see we need certain different items in the posts. So we'll click on posts and you can see we have a user ID, a title and a body, right? So let us now go and add those things. So I'll come down here and what I'm going to do is specify those different properties in this object. So the title we want to send is going to be this.blog.title. Because remember, this thing right here, when we enter something into that form, this is populated. So now we can grab that once they've entered something and they click that button and we can grab it and store it here in this object that we're sending. Okay. So the next thing we need to add is the body and that's going to be this.blog dot content that was the text area okay and then we'll also pass through a user id um, and because we don't really have a user id we just have these names right here where are they these things then what i'm going to do is just leave this for now i'm just going to put in one okay and when we hook this up with firebase we'll add this in properly Okay, cool. So we're making that post request and that's going to post data to that fake JSON server. Okay. So what we can do then is tack on the then method because this is a promise. It returns to us a promise right here, which means, okay, this is going to take some time to complete this action. When it's complete, then I'll fire whatever function you pass through to the then method. All right. So we're going to pass this function through and we receive the data back. And the data that we get back is typically going to be the data that we send in a post request. So let's just log this to the console and see what happens. We'll say console.log and the data. Okay. So let's save that and check it out in a browser. And if we go to our form, I'm going to open up the console just so we can see what's returned to us. And let's enter some details. Okay. Add blog. Now, when we click that, we get a response right here. We can see the URL it went to. Status is 201. It's OK. Everything's fine. It's been created. And we can see the body text we get back is this thing right here, which we entered. OK. And if we open the body, we can see the different properties right there. So everything is absolutely fine. This has all worked. So we've successfully now made a post request. Now, just one little thing I want to do to finish off this tutorial before we move on is to add some kind of dynamic behavior into this so that when we add a blog, then we get a message saying, thanks for adding your blog. And also this stuff hides, right? So let's do that. We're going to use V if to do it. So the first thing I want to do is add in a new property right here called submitted. And what this is going to do is keep track of whether the form has been submitted yet. So to begin with, it's going to be false, right? Because it's not been submitted yet. But when we click on the button to submit, it's then going to be true. So we have submitted it. So we can use this now to use a couple of VIV uh, statements up here. So for example, if we successfully post, then we want to show some kind of success message, right? So we'll add in below the form a div. And this div is going to have the directive v if, and that's going to be equal to submitted. So when submitted is true, then what we want to do is show this message. So inside here, we can output some kind of simple message. I'll do a h3 and I'll say something like, thanks for adding your post. Okay. Now we need, when we click this button down here, we need this submitted to turn to true so that then that shows. So underneath here, we'll say this dot submitted 
equals true. Okay, makes sense? Because when this equals true, then we'll get that kind of feedback message. So let's save this, check it out again. And add blog. Now we get this message right here, which is cool. One more thing, I wanna hide this form when we've submitted as well. So we can add on a V if statement for that. So it's gonna be the opposite of this thing right here. We only want to show the form when submitted is false. So we can do the same thing, v if equals submitted, but just add in this thing, so it kind of negates it, okay? So we'll add that on the form, we'll say v hyphen if is equal to, then negation operator submitted. Save that, and let's check it out. Refresh, and now if we add in a load of stuff, add blog, now it hides the form and we get this message right here. So that's a little bit better, okay? Cool, so there we go. That is how we use view resource to make HTTP requests. This isn't the end of using view resource. We're also gonna make get requests in the next tutorial. And later on down the line, we're gonna hook everything up to Firebase.